Hello, and good, uh, apologies for the slight mess. Just got a new uh, setup for recording. I hope it works fine. The thing I want to talk about today is trauma, dissociation, numbness, fear of trying. There are lots of aspects about trauma that may not seem obvious at first. Normally when you think of trauma, you think of something where um, something bad happens, you're afraid of it happening or happening again, you may have flashbacks, you may be reluctant, like are uh, you afraid of touch or of going to a place or that kind of reluctance. But in many cases what you also see dissociation when trauma is complex enough that it is not just um, that for example a child gets bitten by a dog the child is afraid of, of a dog every time even if it's years later as an adult they may see a dog and they're like oh I'm afraid that's one kind of trauma but what can also happen is when the um, the trauma is more complicated. Say you've got childhood abuse, you've got uh, growing up in an abusive or really poor family, uh, abusive relationship, uh, those kind of things that are more fundamental as far as it, um, as it concerns your trust of people around you expectations you have in terms of uh, social relations or relationships or friendships in those cases one uh, things that you may then encounter things that I have also encountered dissociation that you get this uh, numbness which gets worse when the trauma PTSD, for example, gets triggered. At that point, you find your mind going numb. You dissociate because you don't engage with it on an emotional level. And that's why, but that's how you cope with it. Just by not engaging with it in any real way other than a, a detached intellectual way, maybe at most. That is like a coping mechanism. It is okay um, as a kind of protective mechanism, but where things get um, less great is when you get things like fear, fear of consequences. Say you must go to the to the grocery store because running out of of, of uh, food to eat so you must but going to the store means going outside it means traveling there it means seeing people it means having to deal with situations it means having to choose things and maybe something will go wrong and maybe something like when you're uh, at the uh, at the checkout something will go wrong and suddenly have to deal with the situation or you don't know even just taking the garbage outside what if you encounter someone what if you see a neighbor there are so many situations that you find your mind spiraling and spiraling off into all kinds of tangents and in the end you're just there frozen and unable to do anything because something terrible might happen and you've got good cause for that i mean because of the traumas that you experienced you know from experience that bad things will happen that people will hurt you that without you having any idea that it would have happened suddenly there it is and you're a victim 
it could happen again. Of course it can happen again. I mean, you know, it, it's, will it just happen. Will it happen again? Maybe. The problem with that is, of course, that you do not know that something bad will happen again. But you try telling your brain that. You try telling that traumatized part of your mind that, hey, I can just go to the store. I can just go outside with the uh, the, the, the full garbage uh, bin. I can do all that and nothing will most likely happen. Very likely, very, very likely everything will be fine. That is something, that is a kind of realization that you have to develop. It's something that takes time. Because for the longest period of time, what you fight with is yourself. It's not others. It's not that there are others uh, who are just bothering you about it. No, it is your brain. It is as though there's you and there's the other you. You are there pretending that you're just this person. But there is this other thing, voice, this presence, this monster. That is a trauma. That is traumatized you. And that is not letting go. It wants to make sure that you know, you, this tiny you, that you know that all those bad things have happened and they, they will happen again because that's how the world works. And the whole trick about overcoming trauma is to ignore that void. How do you do that? You can yell at it. You can stare at yourself in the mirror and pretend that you that you are talking to that presence, to that thing, that black monster, that thing that makes you feel afraid and terrified of just doing things and of having fun. That you're talking to that thing and that you are letting it know that no is enough. You don't listen to it anymore. But it's still part of you. It's insidious. It is there no matter whether you're awake or asleep. And even if you yell at it to go away, it may scurry off for a bit. It may feel like it's gone for a while. You may have a good experience and feel really relaxed and don't even notice that, uh, that voice. Those moments are nice. But then you're lying in bed, you see something, you hear something, or just without any real cause, suddenly there it is again. The presence, the voice, the doubt, the darkness, the fear, and you feel this nebulous sensation inside of you, in your mind, whether you are aware of it or not, it's there. But if you are aware of it, if you know that's happening, if you know that um, that presence is there, that it tries to do those things, but that this presence is also you. Because the moment that you experience that first traumatic event, that's when it began to split off. The second event, the third, the fourth, the fifth, every time that you have a flashback, every time the PTSD gets triggered, every single time that you have to go through that again, it gets worse, it grows. It splinters, it's fractures. And this evil, black, horrible presence gets worse. 
until you learn to deal with it. The first step there is to be aware of that, of this presence, to recognize when it is doing something to you. When those black tentacles are warming the way inside your brain and make you feel those things. Those are the moments when you have to be able to not only be aware of that, but also to be able to say no. Because if those tentacles crawl inside you with this fear inducing toxin, and it tells you, you must, you must be afraid, you cannot do this. What if something bad happens? What if you undertake this one new thing? What, what if something goes wrong? You cannot do this. When you feel that, when you hear that voice, that presence whispering those things in, into your ears, you can say no. Or even just ignore it and do the thing. You go to the store, you just put the trash outside and if you see someone, say hello. At first it's not, not easy. It takes time to overcome the resistance. But the more often you do it, the more freedom you will feel, the more the more relaxed it becomes. Because that is how the dark presence, how the trauma loses its grip on you. Because you have to reinforce to yourself every single time that in the end, the fear that you feel because of the trauma, the inhibitions, the dissociation, the, f the sensation of feeling blocked, that is not because of you. That is not because of this you, little you, but that is because of that other thing, the trauma. But the trauma is only a problem for as long as you let that thing, that presence, control you. Saying no is not easy. After dealing with uh, PTSD myself since childhood, It's, it's really hard to say that, um, no, it's, n it's never easy. It's not something that you just overcome and it's like, okay, now it's, 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 it's done with, I've cured my PTSD and I can move on now. <laughs> that would be great, but that's not how it works. What, what this is mostly about is uh, take back control. Because the main problem with PTSD is simply, just like with other forms of trauma, is that you lose control. And losing control over those situations also means that you lose control over your own life. And the way to take back control over your own life is by saying no to the trauma. To say no to the PTSD. And of course there are those moments when, especially with, uh, with something like PTSD, when you have those really strong triggers, where you just feel completely overwhelmed by something just blossoms inside your mind. And the only thing that you know is that, okay, you're completely emotionally, instantly you're a wreck. Taking back control from that is really hard and you just have to go away, find a quiet spot.
That's okay. You can afford the situations. Fortunately, not always, but usually. But the other 99% of the time, when you're not dealing with things like that, then you can take back control. Because this is not about the the, the massive uh, flashbacks and those kind of um, re-traumatization. I'm not sure there is a easy way to, to deal with that other than avoid those situations where possible. But um, in the end, it's about being able to have a life that you can live, which is a life that you control. Having that traumatic presence inside your mind is one of the major ways that you can lose that control, that you lose joy in life. Because if you feel the fear, if you feel the uncertainty, if you feel the dissociation and the passiveness, just the sinking back into like, because the, the outside world is scary, inside, here I know what is going on, or losing yourself on the internet, on social media and other activities, because then you don't have to confront reality. None of that really helps, none of that really makes you happy, even though it feels good. In the end, if you want to live, if you want to feel joy in life, you have to take back control. I think that is the lesson that I have learned uh, most strongly the past years, is how you claw back, how you claw, literally claw your way back out of this pit of trauma, how you escape the passiveness, how you escape this dissociation of trying to basically avoiding everything, all responsibilities, unless it is suddenly it gets forced on you, then you have to confront it, then you have to deal with it, then you can deal with it because you must, but after that you sink back again. And nothing happens. There's nothing. Because you have no motivation. You have nothing. Because you just know that the moment you try something. Bam. Goes wrong. You get punished again. Something terrible happens. You know. Just like before. And that fear that keeps you from living your life. It all sounds so simple when you think about it. But when you're actually dealing with it. It is your it is your own mind that is trying to sabotage you. And how do you fight against yourself? How do you fight and win against your own mind? It's not an easy struggle, but just having a few uh, guidelines, a few tips. Something that you can use to guide you, to see those things that you need to see in order to find your path out of the darkness again. I found that that is most helpful of all. That you can reach that point where you actually feel alive, where you feel like yourself that you feel that you can really see yourself in a mirror <laughs> and where you don't feel afraid. That is a feeling that takes years to cultivate when you're trying to recover from severe trauma. But um, if you want to live your life if you want to feel joy again, real actual joy, 
not a quick chuckle, but actual joy. Then, yes, it really is. It's really the only way. For my for myself personally, I think the biggest change has been the acknowledgement of the the understanding of how it works with how the the fear of consequences how it has ruined my life the past years because of the passiveness you're afraid of uh, consequences you're afraid of um breaking out of the mold and something bad happens so you just go with the flow and everything should be fine right not if you're passive and acknowledging that and trying to deal with that has been most helpful. So I hope that uh, sharing some of these experiences with uh, with you all helps, at least some of you. And they say, well, as, as they say, a human being is never finished. You always have to keep working on yourself. And whether you are dealing with uh, trauma, with PTSD, with some really unpleasant things in your life, you have to keep working on it and become the better person so that you can enjoy life. And that is something that I wish for everyone, for myself, for you all. So take care and until next time.